Our eyes are very good at resolving the narrow transition edges of real-life objects. Digital devices such as digital cameras and scanners don't do it quite as well. Digitized images appear to us to be a little bit soft in comparison. However, this is not really a problem because in most image editing software there is a sharpening filter. This filter was traditionally called the unsharp mask filter. You're probably wondering why a filter that sharpens is called unsharp. The name unsharp mask refers to a process rather than a result. In Adobe Photoshop it works this way. Photoshop creates a copy of the image internally which you actually never see. It applies a blur to this internal image making the image unsharp, hence the term unsharp mask. It then compares the unsharp version of the image with the original image pixel by pixel to find image detail. It then increases contrast with a high contrast halo around these found edges of detail. This creates the illusion of a sharper image. It isn't actually any sharper, it's just higher contrast along these transition edges. For simplicity's sake, let's use this simple graphic of a dark gray square overlapping a lighter gray square to demonstrate how sharpening works. To imply the unsharp mask filter in Photoshop, which can be referred to in its abbreviated form as USM, go to the filter menu and drop down to sharpen. You'll notice that at the very bottom of this pop-up menu we have Smart Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. Above these we have Sharpen More, Sharpen Edges, and Sharpen. These are all just forms of Unsharp Mask, but they do not offer as much control as Unsharp Mask and Smart Sharpen. Let's take a look at the Unsharp Mask filter. The speed with which the Unsharp Mask dialog box appears seems instantaneous. That's because I'm working on a fast computer. But on slower computers, the Unsharp Mask filter dialog box may take longer to come up. And certainly if it's a larger size file, the same is true. The reason for this is the last settings entered in the dialog box are saved and then are applied to the current open image that you're trying to add sharpening to. So any time lag is just Photoshop applying a blur to the internal copy of the image and then comparing this blurred copy pixel by pixel with the sharper image. This time lag, as I said, will increase with larger size image files. Let's zoom in to 100% by using the keyboard shortcut Command Option 0 or if you're working with Windows that's Control Alt 0. Now I'm going to drag the image into a better position by holding down the spacebar, drag in the mouse. By the way, when applying filters, it's important to view the filter's effect at 100% zoom. 100% makes one image pixel equal one monitor pixel. This gives us the most accurate view of the filter's effect on the pixels in the image. You'll notice that the edge of the graphic appears sharper than it did before. The reason why? The Unsharp Mask dialog box has instructed Photoshop to add sharpening halos around the edge of this dark square against the lighter square. To make this a little more obvious, I'll increase the settings. Now with these much stronger settings, you can see that it's much more obvious. The controls we have for Unsharp Mask in the Unsharp Mask dialog box are Amount, Radius, and Threshold. Amount controls the intensity of the sharpening halos, while radius controls the actual size of the halos. And threshold controls how much tonal difference there must be between adjacent pixels before a sharpening halo is applied. Let's push the amount to its maximum setting so we can really see its intensifying effect. You notice that the halos, the darker halo got much darker and the lighter halo became brighter. These contrasting halos create the illusion of a sharper image. However, this graphic is not any sharper than it was before we applied the unsharp mask. Looking back at amount, you notice that it's expressed as percentage and it maxes out at 500%. If we set it to 100%, which I can do by dragging this, or if I want it exactly at 100%, I can just type in on my keyboard 100 
the light tone halo that we see against the edge of the light gray square becomes twice as bright, or you could say 100% brighter than this area was before the sharpening. Radius, on the other hand, determines how much blur is added to the internal image. Notice that it is the same as working with the Gaussian blur filter, which uses the same pixel radius slider control. So right now, if we set this to, let's say, 2 pixels, and let's set the amount up maximum again so we can really see the differences here. And uh, I'm going to zoom in on this. So from the very center of the light gray halo right here, we see that it's going to radiate out in two pixels in each direction. And if I were to take the radius up to an even higher number, like let's say, oh, let's type it in 10, from the center out, it would be 10 pixels in that direction and 10 pixels out in that direction. So to recap, the amount determines the contrast or the brightness difference between the contrasting halos, whereas the radius determines the actual size of the halos. Now I'm just going to change the threshold back down again. Let's put it down to 2. And let's take a look at threshold. Threshold gives us the option of ignoring minor transitions by subtracting the chosen threshold value from the overall sharpening. It determines how much difference there needs to be between any two adjacent pixels before it adds a sharpening halo. It is measured in levels, that's 0 to 255 levels, 0 being pure black, 128 being middle, and 255 as pure white. If threshold were set to a value of, let's say, 14, levels, then contrasting pixels that are 14 or less levels difference in brightness will receive no sharpening, that's a mount or a radius. As you are probably realizing, threshold is an important sharpening tool to use when trying to avoid sharpening noise in a noisy image. It also allows us to be more selective in what gets sharpened and what does not get sharpened by allowing unsharp mask to concentrate on sharpening grosser detail, which usually tends to be higher contrast while ignoring finer detail, which usually is lower contrast detail, such as noise in the dark areas of an image or grain from film scans. So in the end, applying unsharp mask to an image doesn't actually make the image any sharper. It just creates the illusion of a sharper image by creating higher contrast around areas of detail.